This channel contains mature subject matter, so if you're not 19 years or older, don't watch this channel. With that being said, let's get into it. Hey everyone, so uh, I'm outside, I'm working on the deck, I've been doing some pressure washing, I've got all the deck boards, all the railings, they're nice and clean, no more mildew and mold, uh, and I'm setting up the greenhouse, but something I want to talk about today is cover crops and companion crops. There does seem to be quite a bit of confusion about uh, when and how to use companion and cover crops. So uh, I'll start with uh, last year. So last year I mixed up my soil, I filled these 50 gallon fabric pots. I then used a uh, micro clover as a cover crop as well as a uh, white dutch clover. Now the reason I did that is because there was a time frame when I mixed the soil uh, and then it was a few weeks that went by until I put my plants into the soil. Now because it was freshly mixed soil I really wanted to get a few different benefits from the cover crop. One of them is uh, the root structure on the surface of the soil can help uh, drainage. It can help help prevent that uh, crust, that hard crusty layer from forming on the top of your soil when it dries out. It also uh, is better for the worms. So the worms, uh, when you put worms in your pots, they like to have that root environment. So, so it benefits the worms. So last year I added the cover crop uh, a few weeks before I put the cannabis into the pots and it gave uh, the clover some time to establish some roots. Uh, it made a nice top layer on the soil and it also started the interaction between uh, root exudates and microbial life in the soil. So right around the root zone of plants, there's a tremendous amount of uh, bacteria and fungus which is interacting with the roots of the plant. And I wanted to begin that interaction within the soil. I wanted the microbial life to start building up. So that was my thought when I added the clovers last year. Now cover crops can attract pests. So what I noticed last year is I actually ended up having aphids that made their way into the clover. And I ended up just pulling the clover right out. Okay, now when should you run a cover crop? Here is an example of a nitrogen fixer. This is crimson clover. Now, nitrogen fixers pull nitrogen from the air and they put it into the soil. Now, a nitrogen is one of the macro NPK nutrients. NPK meaning nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So one method uh, that you can use a nitrogen fixer is actually cycling crops. So for example, uh, what I could do, I could grow cannabis in these pots after the cannabis grows I could chop it down I could plant my clover the clover will grow fix nitrogen into the soil uh, that's going to give me good high quality affordable nitrogen uh, readily available for the cannabis plants now once the clover is finished growing chop it down and uh, plant the cannabis in so uh, for cover crops you can rotate your crops now the reason I say that too is because cover crops can actually overwhelm the roots of your cannabis plants. If you're growing a cover crop at the same time as your cannabis plants, you do have the potential of, of having the cover crop pull nutrients from the cannabis and other types of uh, crops as well. So you could see that a very heavy, thick cover crop will actually pull the nutrients uh, from the desired crop. So on a commercial level, if you harvest uh, your, your main crop and then you plant cover crop, let the cover crop grow, let it fix nitrogen into your soil, that potentially could save hundreds of pounds uh, of nitrogen fertilizer. I'd also like to mention that nitrogen fixing plants will fix nitrogen into the soil in different ways. So certain plants will uh, pull nitrogen from the air and deposit it uh, through their roots into the soil. Some nitrogen fixing plants will not fix any nitrogen until the plant has reached the flowering stage and once the plant produces flowers, it will begin fixing nitrogen. 
Some plants uh, will not fix nitrogen at all during their life. So those styles you will grow uh, and then at the end of their life cycle, you'll chop it down and as the roots decompose, as the roots break down, they will deposit nitrogen into the soil. Actually, let's take a look here at the crimson clover. This plant can be worked into the soil easily, uh, plants to grow until flowering begins, and simply remove the tops and compost, leaving the roots intact in the soil. Allow 10 days before planting the next crop and avoid following with legumes, peas, beans, or soy. So uh, legumes, peas, beans, and soy, those are all nitrogen fixers. So what you'll find often, uh, you'll see farmers, they will cycle their crops between a nitrogen fixing plant like beans or legumes. Uh, it will put nitrogen into the soil. The next crop, they will plant something that draws a lot of nitrogen from the soil. And by alternating crops, it replenishes the soil with a good source of nitrogen from the air. Now where I live, it's much too cold in the winter to grow a cover crop on these plants. In uh, warmer climates, they will harvest their cannabis plants, they will plant a uh, cover crop immediately, and by the following spring, they will have a very healthy cover crop. They can chop it and they can plant their cannabis. Uh, and again, uh, because where I live, it's just, it's simply too cold uh, to do that. So I just re amend uh, with dry amendments as well as compost. But the smaller pot we're looking at there is from tobacco. So I grew a tobacco plant. This is a 15 liter pot, so about four gallons. I grew eight tobacco plants last year. I'm only growing four plants this year because I just didn't have the room. I ran out of space in my little greenhouse. So I'm going to cut down the number of plants this year and I'm hoping that will uh, allow the plants to have a bit more room, the cannabis plants, uh, as well as dropping the relative humidity slightly uh, in the fall. Okay, so what I can do, I have eight of these tobacco plants from last year. So I'm going to uh, use four of these plants uh, as a second generation no-till. And then four of them, uh, I may decide to put a cover crop of some of this crimson clover. Uh, what that's going to do, it's going to replenish the soil with nitrogen. Uh, once the clover has finished growing, I can chop it uh, and I'm going to leave the pots for next year for 2022. That's a good example of uh, one way to use a uh, cover crop. Okay, companion crops. Some people like to grow companion crops uh, right in their pot with their cannabis. Uh, what I've done this year, uh, some of those smaller pots, I have a variety of different plants. One of them is a variety of flower, which will attract beneficial insects. So the companion crop I chose this year was alyssum. And the reason I chose that is for uh, the beneficial insects that this plant can attract. Now there is a species of uh, very tiny wasp. This wasp has the ability to attack caterpillars and aphids and other small pests. Now, caterpillars can be a huge problem in the cannabis garden. This species of flower is said to attract this variety of wasp. Now again, these are incredibly small wasps. Uh, they're very hard to see. Uh, you would probably just think it was a very small uh, fly if you saw it flying around. Uh, but that is why uh, I chose this flower uh, to try out this year. And then the other one is dill. So dill can attract beneficial insects as well. So companion crops, uh, some people do prefer to grow them in the same pots as their cannabis plant. I prefer companion crops growing in different pots. Uh, and I just keep them in the same growing area and I can still get the benefits. Now, as far as how to uh, apply the seeds, all the seeds are going to be different. Just follow the packaging directions. All right, now uh, I am not by any means an expert on cover crops or companion crops. 
Uh, I do hope that this helped uh, clarify some of the confusion. So what I have here for the greenhouse right now, I have my two 12 by 12s. Uh, they're set up. Uh, I've joined the two peaks of these two tents with a piece of poly lock and I've uh, supported the center of that poly lock. So this is the beginning of my greenhouse structure. I have 20 foot wide plastic, which I'm going to use uh, for a one piece roof section this year, which should make uh, a huge difference. I had a lot of leaks last year and I contribute that uh, largely to the bud rot issues I had. So instead of running oscillating fans uh, and having a whole bunch of oscillating fans, which can be uh, quite noisy and they can draw quite a bit of power once you add up all the fans in an area this big. So I'm going to be uh, installing a convection tube into this greenhouse this year. So I've picked up some 12 inch lay flat uh, poly tunnel and I'm going to be uh, running it through the center of the top of the greenhouse. Uh, the birds, they really love the barley. I think I'm gonna have to uh, maybe put the cages back around the pots and tie some reflective tape. Or I could just let the birds eat some of the grain on the surface and uh, not worry about it.